it is at the breaking of the body that there was access granted to men to partake, to penetrate, and to fellowship with the body. The body was an indivisible unit until the point when it was broken. Kayanos, 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 flesh tongues, Kayanos, flesh tongues. Rivers. Many of you have drunk only one river. Meanwhile, the scripture said, Rivers. You will drink another river. Kayanos from your belly. Kayanos from your belly. Kayanos. A new depth, a new fountain, a new depth, a new fountain. Kayanos. I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. The audacity of Paul's revelatory ministry is something that is not parallel. Paul was saying on the night that Jesus was crucified. And you and I know that Paul was not among the twelve. That the people that gathered to partake of the la that last supper were the twelve. As a matter of fact... According to the record of the book of Acts of the Apostle, Paul was amongst the people that was persecuting the church. Persecuted the church to the point that he went and collected permission and left Jerusalem and started going to other cities. Just to bind them. The scripture said he brings them bound unto Jerusalem. Where did Paul enter? You see, anytime I remember the ministry of Paul, I now know that there is hope for us. The reason why there is hope for us is because a lot of the encounters and the experiences of the apostles of the Lamb was such that it is unique to that first generation of people that followed Jesus. For example, it was only them that ate the last supper with. You cannot, you can eat any, but that, that last supper is only that twelve. When they took him and put him in a boat, it, it was only them. We cannot replicate that encounter. There are several things that happened when Jesus was alive upon the face of the earth that cannot be replicated. The challenge with that is that we can assume that the spiritual impact and reality of those experiences is lost. But the day came a man, his name is Paul, he appeared and he said, that which I have received of the Lord. And he said, on the night. Meanwhile, Paul was not physically there on the night. But he said, I received that encounter. Oh my God. Meanwhile, the people that participated in that last supper did not receive the reality of the revelation that backs up that kind of encounter. They did not receive it. So they were not able to teach it. But Paul owes his generation a burden. A burden to be brought into the fuller knowledge of, if you are with me so far, say amen. It was such a burden that he came to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. He said that God, because he has desired to bring the Gentiles into the commonwealth of the faith of God that is in Christ Jesus, he said he committed to me a grace and the name of that grace is the grace that makes all men see. Because it is very hard to make a Jew to see talk more of a Gentile, but God gave Paul a grace, and that grace is revelatory. He has the ability to bring even the most ignorant barbarian into the truth of the living word of God. Such was the grace he had. And for him to be able to deliver the things that God gave to him, he has to receive so that he can deliver. He has to what? Receive. So that he can what? I didn't hear you. He has to what? So that he can what? So what a man can deliver is what he has received. What have you received? Turn to your neighbor, ask your neighbor, what has you received? You see, the passion of Christ and his crucifixion, of course, everything about Jesus Christ upon the face of the earth is unique. There are several uniqueness about the person of Jesus that there is no other human that has passed upon the face of the earth that retained that capacity in him. 
I'm not just saying the uniqueness of um, his deity. I'm talking about the uniqueness of his humanity. There is a uniqueness about his humanity. There is a way he lived. There is a way he was born. There are things he claimed that no other person can claim. And he didn't just claim it. He actually manifested it. Only him can do that. So when it was time for him to, to summarize his ministry upon the face of the earth, there is a fundamental need. There is a fundamental need because the person Jesus is about to leave. But there is a need for the work of Jesus to continue upon the face of the earth. So if Jesus, the person, is no more there, who will continue that work? It means that there must be a way to induct people into the circumference of his ministry, into the office of his ministry. So you will now realize in the book of Matthew chapter 16 that the scripture was said that Jesus was asking questions. He said, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And many people answered many things. But when he came to Paul, when he came to Peter by the Holy Ghost, he said, thou art what? I didn't hear you. Thou art what? The son of the living God. Now, aside many things, Jesus said, yeah, that you are correct. He now said, upon this rock, will I do what? I didn't hear you. Will I what? You don't even know how profound that, that statement is. On doctrinal basis, that is a very profound statement. Because the church was not born until the resurrection. It was at resurrection that Jesus retained the capacity to possess a people from the point of ascension. The basis of ascension is so that Christ can from that point possess. The scripture said that he seated far above principalities and powers. It is from that point. It is not just that he governed from that point. He possessed from that point. So it is not possible for you to ascend there until you die and you resurrect. Are you seeing it? So there are claims of divine justice that need to be met. There is a coronation service that Jesus is going to. And the purpose of that coronation service is not necessarily for him. Yeah, it is for him. But in extension, it is for you. Because the purposes of God is tied with man. Man has many methods of doing things. God's method is man. So God has to come in the likeness of man, died, resurrected, and then ascended. It is from the point of ascension, according to the book of Acts chapter 2, that the Holy Spirit was poured forth. That means the Holy Spirit is the signature witnessing to the fact that the resurrection of Christ is complete. That his sacrifice is accepted. That he is now sitting upon a throne. And from that point that he's sitting, if the Holy Spirit is sent forth, Christ through the Spirit can possess every single person that believes on his name. And the conclave the convergence of men that is possessed by Christ, by the Holy Spirit, is what we now call the church. It will now mean that the church is the vessel that God, that Christ inhabited, possessed from his office. If you are with me so far, say amen. The reason why I'm saying this thing is, it means that that office, because Peter said that this Holy Spirit you are seeing being shed forth, it's a proof that Jesus is now the Lord and the what? He's now the Lord and the Christ. Are you getting the point? It means that it is at this point that that office was ratified. Huh? And the Holy Spirit was now poured forth. It means that that office of the Christ was activated at that point. It is existing. It means that the capacities and the intentions of God through that office was not yet activated until after resurrection. And when Jesus went to heaven, after the coronation service, he poured forth the Holy Spirit so that through the Holy Spirit he can possess men. So when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, it is Christ that came by the Holy Ghost. Are you getting the point? A convergence of every man that has the Spirit of Christ is now what we call the body of Christ. So Christ possessed us. So from that office of the Christ, he was able to possess every man. And the functions of that office cascades into the heart of every man that yielded himself to the government of the very spirit that came to establish Christ in our heart.
Mantles have been given to the church. Mantles have been given to the church once again. Elijah's arising from the church once again. The borrowers arising from the gates of the church. The borrowers arising from the gates of the church. Esther's arising from the gates of the church. Esther's arising from the gates of the church. Elijah's arising from the gates of the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because in, in the spirit, that event is still fresh. According to the scripture, one of the reasons why the blood of Jesus is effective is that the Bible said that Christ, that Jesus through the eternal spirit offered. It means that he took advantage of the endless dimension of the life and possibilities. Oh, my. By revelation, you can travel forward. You can travel backwards. For Paul, by revelation, he went back and sat on the seat. Instead of being 12 apostles on that seat, there were 13 people. That's what I'm trying to do. Hmm? Instead of being 12 there, there might be 100 people here that might join that last supper. Because what Paul is trying to say is that if you will receive what Christ delivered, then you might have to travel to that last day, that last supper. And the only way to do that is to travel by revelation. And the only way to benefit from the impact of that encounter is for you to travel by revelation to that point. When you come to that place, Peter will sit. You say, Peter, she for me. Let me sit beside you. Where are you sitting now? Hmm? The only way for you to partake is for you to say, Andrew, Andrew, shift for me. And then you sit beside him. John the Beloved! Shift from beside Jesus. I want to sit between you and Jesus. I want to sit. I want to sit. John the Beloved, shift for me. Because there is a revelation. There is an experience I need to enter into. I don't want to do something carnally and be robbed of the spiritual impact. Ah, because the sign of that experience on that um, place where the bread was broken. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. There is, there are two reasons why that statement was made. It is at the breaking of the body that there was access granted to men to partake, to penetrate and to fellowship with the body. The body was an indivisible unit until the point when it was broken. And it takes the owner of the body to break the body by himself. Listen, let me tell you. I hope you know that Jesus was not killed. I hope you know that Jesus was not killed. He died. In fact, according to the records, it takes a minimum of, a minimum of two days for somebody to die by hanging on the cross. Are you with me? But Jesus died before it was evening. That means it was not the cross that killed. It was not the cross that killed Jesus. He laid down his life. In fact, they said that people stay as much as seven days on the cross. But for the scripture to be fulfilled, he said none of his bones was broken. It was intentional. He was the one that granted us access it was no man that caught him up and killed him. He broke his body so that you can enter. So that when you enter there, the power and possibilities that is found within the body can become your possession. If only you can have revelation. So by revelation, the man Paul journeyed and came. When he arrived, where he arrived was that place when they were breaking the bread. He said, Lord, what's the meaning of this bread? He said, this, the meaning of this bread is my body that is broken for you. So that anytime you partake of it, you can be granted access to the things that is yours in me. Is there sickness in, the, in that body? Is there lack in that body? Is there weakness in that body? Is there demons, demonic attacks, affliction in that body? You need to access that reality. I don't know the reality that is in the body that you need to access. If only you can enter by revelation, you can possess it. 
I want you to pray for one minute. Say, Lord, give me revelation. Open my eyes that I might see. You are not praying. Open my eyes. Come and bring the communion table here. Bring it here. People, things will happen when people come to this communion table. My God, you are not praying. My God, open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see. When I come to this communion table, just like Paul John it, I'll be taken beyond the physical activities and the natural elements. And I'll be carried into the very reality of the experience that is held up in Christ in the spirit. Oh my God, you are not praying. You are not praying. I pray that God will encounter a few of you here. Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali yo Oh 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 In Jesus name Father we bless this communion table in the name of Jesus Christ We ask that by this prayer that is dissociated from everything natural and human let it indeed be a token representing your body and your blood that every man that partakes in it will be brought into the same reality with it with his full attendant power life possibility in the name of jesus christ